Can you pick a card for mommy? Yeah. Is this one? Sure. And then hand it to me. Here you are. I am extra excited for this weekly reading video because, as you saw in the beginning, my daughter, my three-year-old, picked these three cards. As I always say, this is not a predictive reading, so while some of these themes that come up may very well show up in your life, the intention behind this is more to give you something to think about or even provide journaling prompts. I know it's so cliche for a witchy person to love Halloween, but yeah. This is Barbara Moore's Trick or Treat Tarot, illustrated by Jonathan Hunt. This is a super cool deck and, hey, Halloween doesn't just have to be a time of year. It's a lifestyle for some of us, am I right? So here we go, let's dive in. For our first card, we have the Queen of Pentacles. This card showing up for us right now could be an indication that we're being nudged to look at how we can be more resourceful, more creative. Are there any resources or materials or is there anything ongoing in your life right now that you can mold or shape? into something beautiful or something that will bring abundance. For some, this could mean starting a business or even picking up where you left off if you already started a business and maybe put it on hold. Or you've had a business idea for a while, but for whatever reason, you haven't acted on it yet. What can you make right now? Or it's possible that you're being guided to look for someone who has the traits that can help you create this dream. Another interpretation is you could be that mentor for someone else if that's what inspires you right now. Whatever the case may be, there is a lot. There is so much we can accomplish, but it does take persistence. Even a dream or business or venture, whatever it may be, that you absolutely love, it does take work to bring it into that ultimate form to forge it. That was our first card. And now we have the Hangman, which is card number 12 from the Major Arcana. Now this is about changing our perspective. Can we take the time to step back a little bit from our daily lives and shift our perception in some way. Okay, I know that sounds a little abstract, or it might sound a little abstract, so let's give one example. It could be simply about pausing and enjoying the blessings in daily life, rather than getting so used to them that even if we don't mean to, we start to take them for granted. How about during the particularly good and awesome moments, we take a snapshot in our mind and list exactly what it is we love about that moment or those moments. Another example could be if you're feeling stuck, if there's a certain problematic situation in your life, if you tend to get anxious or you overthink things, how about allowing yourself or giving yourself permission to do something else for just a little bit? Maybe you can do something you consider fun or rest, take a nap, eat something that brings you joy, whatever it may be for you, because we are all different, but what can you allow yourself to do for a little bit? That could give the part of your brain that's been worrying or trying to come up with a solution a break. And in the process, 
it's possible that you'll end up with a fresh take on what's going on that's been bothering you. If you can see in the picture, right here, there's a cell phone which looks like it fell from his pocket. In this day and age, it's common for us to be so focused on technology and looking at our phones all the time. That right there is an example of stepping back from something that you've gotten used to doing so that you can take a look at moments that you could be missing, people whose company you could be enjoying. That was card number two. And now we have card number three, which is number 13 in the Major Arcana, Death. A question I have for you is, what in your life seems to be coming to an end, but maybe you don't want to let go of it yet? Or even though you're perfectly fine with it ending, you haven't exactly acknowledged that it is ending. Anything from a relationship to a job or old habits? Is there anything that's been so entrenched in your life and that has served an important purpose for you, but now you know it's done? There is a process to grieving and this isn't just about people we mourn when they pass away. Sometimes parts of our lives as well, or our old identities, we feel better if we properly mourn them, or for some of us have some ritual where we say goodbye, because that provides closure in some way, or there's more awareness there that we are now at a new stage in our lives. And no, grieving isn't necessarily linear. Sometimes even if we've already accepted that Yes, there's been a loss. That doesn't mean that we won't find ourselves sad sometimes. Maybe there's something that's been transforming or transitioning in your life, and it's time to acknowledge that so that you can more fully step into that next phase rather than holding on to what was. It doesn't even have to be a really huge thing. It doesn't have to be a huge life change. Though, of course, for some of us, that is what it is. And for others, it could be something that's more in the distant past that you just haven't allowed yourself to acknowledge or take a look at yet. I would dare say that some things could even be resurrected. Not all by any means. I think a lot of the time when the death card comes up, it is talking about change. But for some of us, I feel like the point this brings up is, is there something that you've left behind that you lost faith in or lost hope in, so you just kind of let it die or wither, but you're actually still curious about it? It still holds a place in your heart. Could it possibly be time to rediscover that thing, that interest, that passion? Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I had a lot of fun as always creating what I intend to be insightful content. There's so much more coming up on this channel. Take care. Bye for now. More episodes of Diaries of a Witchy Creative Life coming soon. Oh my gosh. Doppelganger.